I can't hear anything, so I just need to sort that out. Okay, now I can hear something. Jerusha, uh, if you can be unmuted, please say hi. <laughs> Okay, these signs of sound. Thank you. Good morning, guys. Um, today is day two of our grade 11 maths. Um, so what I'm going to ask from you guys just to check. Um, the, so, oh, yes, it is me again, um, Ms. Shabalala. Um, we're doing, we're on to day two of trigonometry today. If you guys need to contact me, you're very welcome to slip into my DMs on Twitter. My, uh, my username is underscore Mbali T. Right. So the rules of engagement remain unchanged. We're here to respect each other because we're all here to learn. There is no such thing as a dumb question. Please feel free to ask. Please keep your microphones on mute. Please raise your hands if you have questions. You will, you can ask when you're unmuted and then um, there's no, no vulgarities allowed, guys. Please, can we, goes back to point number one, please may respect each other. And lastly, please, can we not take the learning opportunity away from anybody else? Right. Those are my rules that still remain. And so let's move on for today. For today, what we are trying to do, number one, if you remember from yesterday, I gave you those two tables to complete. Now, in my one table had quite a few errors which I've corrected. So for today, we'll be completing yesterday's special angle table quickly, which you guys can check yourself against. And then we'll be jumping onto our quotient identities as well as our Pythagorean identities. Everyone happy? Um, my other rule that I need for today, guys, I, I'm going to ask you please for a bit more interaction, just so that I know and I'm aware that I'm on track, that everyone is up to speed. If there's any principles that I need to revisit, please stop me while I'm at it. Um, as I had said, raise your hands, please, and you will be unmuted so you could speak or ask your question. And if you are more comfortable you can send me a chat question. I will also attend to those. Um, so yes, the first part of today is for us to, let me do this, any questions yet? Anything anyone would like to get off their chest? Any concerns around the way we do things so that if we can address that in today's lesson, we can do so. There's no red hand, there's no raised hands. Um, so I'm going to take it that we are all good and well. Right. Uh, sorry, guys. There we go. So this was yesterday's table. Um, so just to highlight something, guys, sometimes the unmute doesn't work. Sometimes we may struggle to unmute you. So if you feel like we are taking, give or leave, this more or less, we're saying take time to unmute you, then I'm going to ask you to please then just send me a chat message, which will pop up immediately and I'll be able to respond accordingly. So this was one of yesterday's tables, the 36090 table. And I had asked you guys to complete the reciprocal identities of the table. Did you guys do that? I hope you guys did that um, because here, Ladies and gentlemen, is the completed table. Just a reminder that everywhere where your denominator is a square root, you multiply by the square root of three over the square root of three to remove the square root from the denominator. As you remember, it's the same impact as multiplying by one 
all we're really trying to do is express the number without a rooted denominator. So um, quick scheme through of how this works. Cosec is the inverse of sine sec. And so then sine sec being opposite over hypotenuse, cosec is hypotenuse over opposite. And that would be your three over your one. Um, same goes for, I just need a laser pointer, please. There you go. Same goes for um, our sec of 30 degrees. Sec is the inverse of cos. Cos being adjacent over hypotenuse. And so we have hypotenuse over adjacent. Likewise for cot. Cot could have purely just been expressed as the square root of three. There would not have been a problem with that. Where the denominator is one, I'm sure you guys are where you could have expressed your answer as just the top number. Where your numerator and your denominator are the same, you could have expressed the amount as just one. My purpose of writing it in this way is so that you guys have a point of reference as to where the ones would be coming from. Then we also did our 45, 45, 90 triangle. So I've updated my numbers on our 45, 45, 90 triangle. I've corrected yesterday's errors here and there, and we have the correct numbers. So, um, oh, just as, a, as we move along, guys, uh, I'm, I'd, I'm pretty sure, I'd like to believe that you guys have instinctively seen some similarities here about how sine of 30 degrees is the same of, as cos of 60 degrees. So I'm going to take for granted that instinctively speaking, you guys have seen those little, call it nuances here and there, because I do think that those little small aha moments are the things that make maths a a hell of a lot more easier, a hell of a lot more bearable. I think, I think trigonometry is, it's not easy, but it's a very fun challenge. And having those kind of tools and that kind of knowledge makes this a hell of a lot easier. All right, so with our 45, 45, 90 triangle, as you can imagine, or as you can expect, sine and cos are exactly the same because our opposite angle and our adjacent angle, of the, our opposite side and our adjacent side are the same because our opposite angles are the same. As such, the sine is equal to, let's say we're using this 45, your sine will be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And your adjacent, your cos will be opposite, will be adjacent over hypotenuse. And naturally, your tan will be equal to one because that is your opposite over your adjacent. Same applies for 90. 90 we addressed in the 30, 60, 90 table, and that remains. The sine of 90 is one. Whether it's two over two or root two over two is irrelevant, it is one. Cause is zero and tan is undefined because you cannot divide by zero. Right, um, completed table, there we go. Simply, these are the inverses of your top numbers. And again, we can have expressed cosec and sec of 45 as just square root of two. We could have just expressed cot as one, and we could have expressed the cosec of 90 degrees as just one as well. Any questions as we are about to begin today's work? Did anyone have any challenges? Does anyone not understand anything? Are we good to go? Okay, I'll take it that we are good to go. Right guys, so we are on to our quotient identities. So a quotient identity defines the relation for cot and tan in terms of sine and cos. I'm sure that sounds like a lot of 
all over the place. But let's start by simply defining what a relation is. A relation is the way in which two or more people or things are connected. That it's a thing's effect on or, or the relevance to another. So when we say, what is the relation? So, so when we express the definition of a quotient identity in a different way, in a simpler way, and in a more question sounding way, we are pretty much saying, what is tan B when expressed in terms of sine B and cos B? For cot, we are saying, what is cot Z when expressed in terms of sine Z and cos Z? So you may have noticed that we are, you, you may wonder why we are talking about expressing these things in sine and cos only. Does anybody know what sine and cos have in common? And the, that thing is what makes them different from tan. Anybody know what the answer to that is? No takers? No. 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 Okay, guys. Um, if you remember our expression of sine, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Our expression of cos, cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And our expression of tan, tan is equal to adjacent, is equal to opposite over adjacent. So from that, you can tell that sine and cos have the hypotenuse in common. Tan does not have the hypotenuse. So with that being said, I pose to you that tan beta is equal to sine beta over cos beta. This is our first quotient identity. And I'm going to prove to you how that is the case. Before we continue, does anybody want to try and prove? Does anybody think they understand? Does anybody want to try and take me through the flow of how we get to this? Or can we get moving? Can we get running? As I had said to you guys, I just need a little more interaction from you guys today. It is the only way that I'm going to know that we are on track. Because I feel like saying to you, today's lesson, the identities when you catch them, when you understand them, when you own them, they make all of trigonometry so much easier. Right? Because you are able to identify them everywhere. So this is a personal rule that I use. Um, we all work differently, guys, and I need everybody to be, if you're comfortable with the maths, then you're comfortable with working however you want to work. What I always try and do because of the existence of the existence of the quotients, anything I try to do, I try to simplify the expression in the form of cause and sign. So if there's any way that I can use cause and sign to express something, be it a tan and however a tan, a cot, then I do that. Always try, guys, to make your expressions as simple as possible. When you always revert back to sine and cos, you make it easier for yourself to simplify and work with. Um, all right. So, as I had said, my first coefficient identity, my first quotient identity to you guys is that the tan of beta is equal to the sine of beta over the cos of beta. Reminder. Sine of beta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of beta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of beta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So how then do we get to sine beta over cos beta? This, our sine beta over cos beta is the equivalent of saying the opposite of the hypotenuse the opposite over the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And remember guys, when you multiply, when you divide by a fraction, it is the same as multiplying by the inverse of the fraction. And so this then translates into 
opposite over hypotenuse times hypotenuse over adjacent. When you do that, hypotenuse over hypotenuse cancel each other out. You are left with opposite over adjacent, which look, looks to me like tan beta. And that, guys, is how you prove that tan beta is equal to sine beta over cos beta. Factually speaking, tan beta is equal to sine beta over cos beta. This was our first quotient identity, guys. Is everybody happy? Are there any questions before we move on to our second example? All right, so I'm going to take it that everybody is happy that this is the tan beta is equal to sine beta over cos beta. Guys, um, just a reminder, the recordings will be available after this for you to use in your own time at your own pace. And again, you can contact me if you need any clarity of any kind at any point. My second identity to you poses that cot beta is equal to cos beta over sine beta. Um, from yesterday's lesson, where we learned the reciprocals, I think we can all simply see how because tan beta is equal to sine beta over cos beta, cot beta is equal to cos beta over sine beta. Everything is literally just the inverse of the other. And so we go back to saying again, our sine is opposite over hypotenuse, our cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and cot is the adjacent over the opposite. Remember, cot is the inverse. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> cot is the inverse of tan. Sorry. So when we say cos beta divided by sine beta, we are equivocally saying adjacent over hypotenuse divided by opposite over hypotenuse. And the fraction rule again, adjacent over hypotenuse, then becomes, uh, <clears throat> sorry, then it becomes adjacent over hypotenuse times hypotenuse over opposite. And our hypotenuse again, cancel each other out, and we are left with adjacent over opposite. And ding, 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 this is cot of beta. Guys, that is as simple as it gets for our two quotient identities. Whether you replace my words, your words as opposite and hypotenuse with the letters of your triangle that you're working with, let's say you, your, your hypotenuse is side C, your opposite angle is side B, and your adjacent angle is side A, whether you're replacing with numbers, whether you're replacing with alphabets, these are the rules. This is how you will derive that cot beta is equal to cos beta over sine beta. Um, with the coming days, we'll begin to get into more complex examples where we actually replace beta with numbers, with identities. Um, and that's why I said to you guys, we'll be moving on towards our Cartesian plane and the like. And so guys, before I move on to our Pythagorean identities, does anybody have any questions about our quotient identities so far? Okay, no chats, no raised hands. So I'll take it that we're all on the same page. We're all good. And we're all finding this at a very, very basic level. Thanks, guys. We're going to move on to our Pythagorean identities. So for Pythagorean identities, there are three Pythagorean identities. And all those identities seek to do is to take the theory of Pythagoras and apply trigonometric functions to them. So it's still the expression of the theory of Pythagoras, just in terms of trigonometry. Now, guys, I need your interaction, please. Who remembers what the theory of Pythagoras says? No. 
Come on. No. Okay. Without the theory of Pythagoras, then without you guys remembering the, Pyth the theory of Pythagoras, I'll pose to you that our three Pythagorean identities are sine squared beta plus cos squared beta is equal to one. Our second identity is, oh, we've got to take it. All right, so Kylie has said to us that the Pythagorean theory says that the hypotenuse squared is equal to side one squared plus side two squared. On the money, Kylie, thank you for your interaction. That is correct. Simply expressed, we normally see that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, with c being your hypotenuse. So <clears throat> our first, <coughs> sorry guys. So our first um, Pythagorean identity, as mentioned, would be your sine squared beta plus cos squared beta is equal to one. Our second identity, one plus cot squared beta is equal to cos cosec squared beta. Our third identity, tan squared beta plus one is equal to sec squared, sec squared beta. So I'm going to go through each one individually. And as you guys get comfortable with these identities, with using your reciprocals, with simplifying all your tens and cods to quotients, which is using sine and cos, you're going to see that there's actually a lot more ways to prove this, these three um, identities than the ways that I will be showing you today. So our first identity, sine squared, <coughs> sorry guys, our first identity, sine squared beta does cos squared beta is equal to one. I think as Kylie had mentioned about the Pythagoras theory, you can all simply see this looks to mimic a Pythagorean theory where it's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Maybe let's say we could call our sine squared the a squared, we could call our cos squared the b squared, and we can call our one squared, the C squared, right? I feel like saying um, to you guys, we can simply say we are substituting sine with A, we are substituting cos with B. When you go back to our right angles triangle over here, remember that sine basically speaks to the opposite angle, and here's your opposite angle, it's A. Remember that your cos speaks to the adjacent side, not angle side. Um, remember that cos speaks to your adjacent side. Your adjacent side over here is B, and that's how you get to B squared. And then you have your hypotenuse. And we'll try and prove, there's, very, there's many ways to prove this theorem, guys. Um, we'll keep exploring as we keep doing questions here and there. Sometimes I'd like you guys to engage me actually and show me how differently from my way did you come to conclude, to make the same conclusion? Um, I'd, I'd actually really like that. Um, I do think that sometimes I see things more complex than they need to be. So if anyone can come to me with something that's simpler, more straightforward and quicker, I'd really love that guys, just for you to guys to engage me. And I'll also take it as a sign that we're doing well, we're doing right and we're all on the same page about with trigonometry so far. So right, sine beta in this case is equal to A over C. So sine beta squared is equal to A over C squared. Everybody happy? Because the sine of beta is your opposite over your hypotenuse. Cos beta is equal to B over C squared. That is your adjacent over your hypotenuse. So cos squared beta is equal to B over C squared beta. So there's your A squared and there's your B squared. Right, then we start with our left-hand side proof against our right-hand side. What we do 
So on the left-hand side, the left-hand side says we've got A squared plus B squared. And so if we use A squared plus B squared, we are going to... <coughs> Sorry, guys. We are going to substitute our A squared plus our B squared back to your sine squared plus your cos squared, as mentioned. And that is our left-hand side. For our right-hand side, it says C squared. How do we get C squared from C squared to 1? Because how the same way that we got A squared. Oh, sorry, guys, my laser is not working so well. There we go. The same way that we got our A squared, we, we, we moved back from A squared, A squared over C squared, and we moved back to just having A. We divide by the C squared. And that's what we've done here. C squared divided by C squared gives us one. So your left hand side is sine squared beta plus cos squared beta. Your right hand side is one. Everybody good with this? This is one of the simpler identities. You always take it back to your starting point with the theory of Pythagoras. Everybody good? Everybody happy? We will be applying actual numbers as time goes on. Is everyone fine? Are there any questions? This was our first Pythagorean identity and we will prepare to move to our second one and if anyone wants to stop and ask. Okay. No chance. I'll take that everybody is okay and I'll move on to my second identity. My second identity says that 1 plus cot squared beta is equal to cosec beta, cosec squared beta. So what does this mean? Remember, remember, always refer back to your quotient identities. So always write your expressions in the simplest form, which is in relation to sine and cos. So Cot, remember guys, is the inverse of tan, which is sine over cos, and so cot is equal to cos over sine. So here, what we have is one plus cos squared beta over sine squared beta. So here we're adding a whole number and a fraction. We have to find the lowest common, well, in this case, the only common denominator, which will be your sine squared beta. To do that, we convert one into sine squared beta over sine squared beta. And so remember, that now we have a common denominator. We can add our numerators. Sine squared beta plus cos squared beta is the same as identity number one, which is one, the answer of which is one. And so we have here that our left-hand side is actually equal to one over sine squared beta. Right, we've written our cot in its simplest possible way. Hoping you guys understand, hoping you guys are happy. And now we're going to move on to our right hand side. Right hand side is purely cosec squared beta. You remember from our reciprocal identities, cosec is the inverse of sine. So cosec is a to one over sign. Okay, that will be resolved. Okay, uh, we have one over sign. So simply put, cosec, ladies and gentlemen, is one over sine squared beta. And that is why one plus cot squared beta is equal to cosec squared beta. That, ladies and gents, is how we prove our left and our right hand side. Identity number three. Everybody happy before we move on to identity number three? Any questions? No, no. Okay. Identity number three. Identity number three says 10 squared beta plus one is equal to sec squared, sec squared beta. Always the rule of thumb, simplify to cause and sign. 
So tan squared beta is equal to sine squared beta over cos squared beta as we proved with identity number one in the quotient identities. And that is how, again, now we have ourselves a formula plus a whole number. We're going to convert our whole to the common denominator being cos squared beta. So we have sine squared beta plus cos squared over cos squared beta plus cos squared beta over cos squared beta. Um, our common denominator is cos squared beta. Our, our numerator says sine squared beta plus cos squared beta, which is the same as identity number one under our Pythagorean identities, which is one over cos squared beta. Right hand side, the same. Six squared beta simply expressed as the inverse of cos, and that is one over cos squared beta. Ladies and gentlemen, those are three Pythagorean identities, and literally that is how you would prove them. All right. Um, any questions before we prepare to wrap up? Okay, everybody seems good, everybody seems on track. So, again, our left hand side is equal to our right hand side. What did we do today, guys? Today, we looked at our quotient identities and we proved that tan beta is equal to sine beta over cos beta. Cot theta is equal to cos beta over sine beta. We also looked at our Pythagorean identities and we proved that sine squared beta plus cos squared beta is equal to one. One plus cot squared beta is equal to cosec squared beta. And tan squared beta plus one is equal to cosec squared beta. Here, guys, are a few questions that I'd like to give you guys, some practice questions that you can take to do in your time. Um, I'd actually like to dedicate a class to us guys resolving these one by one. Um, so this is when I mean, what I mean when I say that your, your guys' interaction is important to me. I'd like to know if I should do that or if I should just post the answers. I don't really like just posting answers. Um, but I also don't like holding you guys back from greatness. So I'm going to make an executive call and say, I will dedicate the first part of tomorrow's lesson to looking back at the answers at this. And then if we do get a chance, we're going to start then on our next topic. So these are tomorrow, these are your practice questions for this afternoon, guys, with the stuff that you have learned today. Uh, and so from that, um, we will look at the solutions tomorrow morning. I'm going to move very slowly through the solutions tomorrow, just then you guys, can, so that you guys can be clear and confident with your uh, solutions, right? Next up, uh, good luck guys with the questions. Next up, uh, posted the helpful links for you guys. The second link is actually great. It is a video of how to prove the different Pythagorean identities. And what will we be doing tomorrow, guys? Tomorrow, I'd like to introduce you guys to the reduction formula. So I'd like you guys to familiarize yourselves with what we mean when we refer to the reduction formula. Do you guys remember the positive and negative identities on a Cartesian plane? If not, then we will be reminding you tomorrow. But it's always better to just come prepared, just juggle your memory here and there so that it's easier to catch on and to keep up as you move along. So for tomorrow's lesson, I'll basically be starting by the practice examples and then I'll be following with your reduction formula. We'll be starting on the reduction formula. We can expect to take more than one lesson on the, picture, on the reduction formula. That, ladies and gents, is the end of my lesson. Thank you guys for coming through. Thank you for your time. I hope I've been very clear. I try very hard to simplify things as much as possible. Any questions on your side before we wrap up? Uh, time is almost up. This is really time for questions if you guys have questions. And I see there's no questions. So there we go. If you guys need anything, you are able to send me a DM on Twitter today with my... On Twitter with my username. And then that, guys, is also how you contact us. So, yes, guys, we've come to the end of our lesson. And I'll just leave these up um, for you guys to copy if you need to. And 
thank you guys for your time. Thank you for coming this morning. And as I like to say, the circumstances are a bit tough for everybody, guys. Please be kinder to yourselves. Please take care of yourselves, your mental health. Please eat well, live well. Whatever religious practice you have, you do that. And let's all hope for the best and make it out of this better people. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a good day.